Books and music are such a perfect combination. Loads of people love listening to music while they read. I know loads of authors who've said they've been inspired by particular songs or artists while they're writing. Some people get really creative and actually make playlists that perfectly capture the mood of a book. But best of all, there are the books about music. And I have got a ton of recommendations here, so buckle in, there's so many to talk about, and even so, I'm still bound to have missed off some of your favorites. So do put any of your recommendations in the comments below because I love books like this. So while we're talking about books about music, there is a book that is so popular right now that I of course have to mention, and that is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which I absolutely loved. I think it's so worth all of the hype. So this book is presented as if it's a documentary. So it's transcripts of these supposedly real interviews with a band from the 70s, a rock band called The Six, who famously collaborated with a rock singer called Daisy Jones. Now the whole thing is fictional, but you almost wouldn't know it. So in the book, you're following how this collaboration happened, how it got so famous and successful, and then what went wrong. Why they only ever made the one album and then were torn apart. So Taylor Jenkins Reid was really inspired by the story of Fleetwood Mac and also more recently the bands The Civil Wars who had these kind of dramatic scandals that tore them apart. So there is a love story in the book between Daisy Jones and Billy Dunn, who's the lead singer of The Six. But I also just loved reading about the music. So you spend a lot of time in the recording studio seeing how these songs come together and this book is being adapted into an Amazon TV show which I'm so excited for because we'll actually get to hear the songs which will be so cool. But until then the best we can do is Taylor Jenkins Reid did actually release a Spotify playlist full of songs that inspired her and songs that kind of just capture the vibe of the book. So I will link to that below, it's a really great playlist. And then a similar book, but a bit darker, is Dance Prone by David Coventry. And this one is coming out this summer, so add it to your wish list. So this is again about a fictional indie band called Neues Bauen on their 1985 tour, on which two major events happen that will change their lives forever. One of the band members is sexually assaulted and another is wounded by gunshot. Then they move on with the tour. And the book is set between the 80s when all of this happened and present day, when the front man, Conrad Wells, is trying to track down his former band member to try and piece together what really happened to them in all of those years of violence and trauma. So it is a very emotionally heavy book, but the book was also very much born out of David Coventry's love for the post-punk period and its cultural effect on the music. And again, he has also created a Spotify playlist that I will link to below, which really captures the essence of this book. And then there's the City Blues Quartet by Ray Celestin. So this is going to be a four book series charting the twin histories of jazz music and the mob through the 20th century. And there are three books out so far. The Axman's Jazz is set in New Orleans in 1919 and is inspired by the true story of the Axman of New Orleans, who allegedly wrote a letter to the city saying that anyone who was playing jazz music on the night that he was next planning a murder would be spared. Then the second book is called Dead Man's Blues. This time it's set in Chicago in 1928. There are brand new mysteries to be solved and this time Louis Armstrong gets involved. And then the third book is called The Mobster's Lament this time we're in New York in 1947 when the mob are at the height of their powers. So I can't wait to see where the fourth book is going to take us. And then, for something much more sweet, The Music Shop by Rachel Joyce. And Rachel Joyce is just the queen of books that are simultaneously heartwarming and seriously tear-jerking. So this one is set, obviously, in a music shop in the 1980s, and it's about a shopkeeper called Frank, who's got this amazing gift for music therapy. So he's a bit like the woman in Chocolat, who always knows exactly which chocolates her customers need. He's got this incredible knack of knowing exactly which piece of music will soothe his customers' particular emotional woes. So he runs this lovely shop, but a local development company are now planning to demolish all of the shops on that street to make room for a new housing project. So he has to deal with that, and he's also doing battle with the record companies who now want him to stock CDs instead of his beloved vinyl. And you can really feel Rachel Joyce's love for music coming through in her writing here, as well as her depth of knowledge. There's so many composers and artists and genres and phases of music explored in here. And next for a classic, The Mambo King's Place Songs of Love by Oscar Ijuelos. So this song won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1990 and was actually the first novel by a US born Hispanic writer to ever do so. So the book chronicles the last hours of this fictional musician Cesar Castillo, 
who immigrated to the US with his brother in the 50s and enjoyed some rather short-lived fame after he and his brother appeared on an episode of I Love Lucy. So in the book, he's sitting alone in his hotel room, looking back on his life and career, all while listening to recordings of his band, The Mambo Kings. And several real-life Mambo musicians are weaved into his history as well, and the whole book is told in this really rhythmic prose that kind of echoes the rhythms of Cuban music. Next, An Equal Music by Vikram Seth. So this is a book I read a long time ago, but loved it. So this is a love story between a violinist called Michael and a pianist called Julia, who broke up many years before, but have now come back into each other's lives and rekindled their romance. Even though it's now much more complicated, Julia is now married and has a child. And there's a lot of love for classical music in this book. But even if you're not particularly familiar with classical music, which I'm not really at all, the book does a really good job of sweeping you along and really kind of bringing that music to life for you. But Julia has a secret which she's been hiding from Michael and everyone in her life which is that she is going deaf and so her relationship to the music that she loves so much is changing. And then there's Nocturnes, Five Stories of Music and Nightfall. This one's by Kazuo Ishiguro. It's his first and so far only short story collection and as you might guess from the subtitle all of the stories are about music and musicians and they are all set at the end of the day. And the stories are all linked by themes of regret and unfulfilled potential. And some of them are quite funny, some of them are much more sad. The final story in the collection is called Cellists and this, according to the Goodreads reviews, seems to be a lot of people's favourite. And this is about a woman who believes herself to be this world-class cello player, only she's never learnt to play the cello. She thought that she had too much potential that none of the existing tutors would be able to teach her and so she would just rather have allowed her potential to remain untapped. Then moving away from classical music, the next book I want to recommend is On the Come Up by Angie Thomas, who's the author of The Hate You Give. So this book is about a teenager called Brie who wants to be the greatest rapper in the world, and her dad was this underground hip-hop legend who died before he could make it big. So Brie has all this anger and frustration which she pours into her first song, which then goes viral, but for all the wrong reasons. So just like in The Hate You Give, Angie Thomas is really unflinching in her portrayal of racism and how the odds are stacked against young black people, and particularly how freedom of speech is this much more dangerous thing for black people. And as well as that, it is an ode to hip-hop, which is a music genre that Angie Thomas, as you can tell from the book, absolutely loves. And then this next one has a great premise, that's Let Me Hear a Rhyme by Tiffany D. Jackson. So this is about a group of Brooklyn teenagers whose very talented rapper friend is killed, and they then decide to bring him the fame that he deserved. So they release his tracks and pretend that he's still alive. But he starts to get this bigger and bigger following, making it increasingly hard for them to keep their secret. And the book is set in the 90s, so you literally see them out on the streets, selling CDs. It's very much ingrained in that era with characters who absolutely adore the music, which you can really feel in the book. And I could just keep going forever in this genre. There's some really famous books I haven't mentioned yet, like High Fidelity by Nick Hornby, which is set in a record shop, or The Commitments by Roddy Doyle, which is about a group of mismatched and not particularly musically talented people who form a soul band in Dublin. And both of those have been made into movies and stage musicals. But I thought I'd finish on two slightly different recommendations. So the first is just a more general recommendation for a poet, and that's Kate Tempest. She is a writer, lyricist, performance poet, recording artist, whose poetry really reads like music. In fact, a lot of her poems are best described as spoken songs. So I would recommend starting with her collection Running Upon the Wires, and in fact I actually will link below some recordings that we have of her reading her own work, so you can really see what I mean about how it sounds like music. And then finally, something totally different, a non-fiction book, Musicophilia by the neurologist Oliver Sacks. So this book is all about uncovering the power of music through looking at the experiences of some of his patients. So you have some amazing stories in here. There's a guy who was struck by lightning and suddenly became obsessed with Chopin. There's a patient whose memory only lasts seven seconds other than remembering music. Or there are patients with Parkinson's who are unable to move unless they're listening to music. Or stroke patients who are unable to speak unless it's through music. It's absolutely fascinating stuff. And for any music lover, it's just a wonderful book exploring quite how powerful music can be. So I will link to a whole playlist here of other videos we've got that music lovers will enjoy. And do leave your comments letting me know your favourite books about music as well. And of course, do subscribe to this channel for new videos twice every week. See you next time.